he swaps shoes. I skate regular, he skate goofy. And uh, this is the left side of my shoe. It's, it's totally ripped. To make good use of it, uh, we just have to swap shoes. He will take the left from mine and I will take the right, right from his. Nothing goes waste. We arrive in Ghana and everything just slowed down. Beach town, nothing moves fast. The heat, for sure the heat is next level. The water is so warm and the people are just like so inviting, such good energy, better energy than I expected, you know. Hey, come, don't be shy, like. <laughs> so this is the skate house and this is where we skate, where we chill, where we eat, where we cook where we argue also. <laughs> in France, you know, my job was to develop extreme sports. And I was like, if I do the same here, I'm sure the scene is gonna grow. And I create just an Instagram account, uh, Surf Ghana. And the idea is, was really to develop tourism of Ghana through skateboarding and surfing. Stomp it. One, two, three. Oh. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh. First try, dude. <laughs> that was amazing. We came to Ghana to meet up with the Surf Ghana crew. It's a few skateboarders from Accra, from surrounding areas, and slowly but surely a lot more women are starting to join the crew. That's <laughs> so much fun. Yeah, <laughs> Well, for me, I don't know, but skateboarding is kind of like an escape. Yeah, it's like my happy place. When I have a lot going on with me in my, in my head, I just go skate and I don't think about anything but skating and I have fun, so that's why I just keep skating. It feels like you're going to fall, like with your face on the floor, so it's like, <laughs> you're scared. It was cool to see a lot of girl skaters here too. It was like almost 50-50. At least the people where we were skating with, there's half girls and half guys, but they're learning how to skate. It's, it's nice to see. So you can come only if it's it's only good vibe here, okay? So <laughs> we try to develop some merch, you see, and to, to get support from people, from locals, from abroad. So we import some boards and we print it here. It means um, femme puissante in French, and it means also in English powerful woman. You see. So yeah, welcome to the kitchen. So I collect a lot. So, for example, this one is a trade fair. So this is a photo that our friend took. It's trade fair is our favorite spot in Ghana, you see. It's where everything started, actually. And it's the only space where we can skate freely. <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, when, when I was a kid, we, we mostly come here, you like have fun fairs, you go on roller coasters and stuff. So somewhere along the line, um, there were some group of rollerbladers who used to come here. And uh, I was one of them when I was very young. When I'm back from school, after doing my homework, I'll just come here to pass time. I, I lost interest in rollerblading because I saw skateboarding on TV. I saw Tony Hawk did his thing in the major, like mega ramp and stuff. And I was like, super dope. This is something I would like to try. Building at Obstacles was like try your luck something. And there are templates online, there are like measurements, everything you can see on the internet. So what we can afford is what we build. And uh, we just go to the market, get the plywood, and sometimes use our own measurements or we use the measurement that's on the internet to, to build what we can. Like some of the things don't even uh, look like what is supposed to be, but that is what we have. So we just make good use of it and uh, we just try to pretend it's in the uh, normal ones that has been skated at the skate park. For so long, they just took it upon themselves to create, um, made their own ramps, pressed their own boards. I don't think they're waiting for anyone to, to change anything anymore. They literally collaborate to make a difference in skateboarding. Being at Trade Fair and realizing that these guys are building their own ramps, building their own skatable structures, it seems like they're actually very resourceful people. Um, we ended up going to this coffin maker who does commission coffin work. So you can be buried in anything you want. You can be buried as an octopus, you can be buried as a gun. I think it's beautiful. There was a chameleon, a giant one, that was standing upright, which means you would be buried standing upright in a chameleon. I don't know, getting that thing into the ground would be <laughs> really intense, but it showed you the craftsmanship and how much work goes into these things. And it's quite a crazy and beautiful concept to take so much time and money to build this beautiful creation for it to then be buried into the ground. And I think it's a, it's a metaphor for life that nothing's permanent and you should just enjoy it. We're at the, what is it, the National Theatre of Accra? I think these rails are used to actually block cars from driving to certain places, but they, they let us skate it, which is amazing. So, uh, we swap shoes. I skate regular, he skate goofy, and uh, this is the left side of my shoe. It's, it's totally ripped. To make good use of it, uh, we just have to swap shoes. He will take the left from mine, and I will take the right, right from his. So, because his right shoes are almost ripped. But this is how we make good use of our shoes. Nothing goes waste. There aren't many places to buy a skate gear here. You can get skateboards, but other than that, I think trucks, wheels, and bearings are hard to come by. Skate shoes are pretty much non-existent in stores. A lot of second-hand skate shoes randomly end up at marketplaces, and it's just the luck of the draw. A skateboarder might walk through the market and see a particular pair of shoes, and it could be there today and never again. So they're always on the lookout to see what they can get in terms of skate shoes. 
so they have to go to these second-hand markets with all these uh, shoes like sprawled out into the floor and it's pretty much touch and go. If you can get there, you can find a pair of Nikes if you can, you can find a pair of Converse, but it just depends on the day. When you're walking, sometimes people are just selling at random spots. In front of the mall, you have people who are selling like just random goods like for cheaper price like in front. So same thing, I, I got some like really nice pair of DCs. But the problem to that too is like you don't always get your size. So sometimes I've had to like wear shoes that are like smaller than my feet and they hurt, but you know, I had no choice because, you know, because there was one time I bought some P-Rods, you know, it was my first pair of like P-Rods and they were like in size nine and I wear size 10, 10 and a half. So it was kind of hard to skate, but I managed it. <laughs> so the Ghanaian crew, they have their local spots that usually contrive of a self-made grind box or a rail. And there are spots around that, but I think their perception of what skateboarding is completely different. So we get to these spots and we end up skating the things around these things they've created. And it's been so nice to see their faces realizing that things are possible and realizing that they could utilize these spots better. And I feel like we've kind of inspired them to start um, looking at things differently and maybe their approach to skateboarding a little bit differently. They always mention, they're like, you guys skate so fast. We're like, yeah, dude, you gotta go fast if you wanna fucking, if you wanna make it happen. And um, we found this one spot underneath the bridge, close to mile seven, with all these wally banks, with these little gaps in between. And they had probably driven past that spot a few times, but they had never thought about stopping and actually utilizing it. And it was so amazing actually watching them, you know, we walked into the space and they were like, what are we doing here? And as soon as we started skating the obstacles, they were like, oh, you can actually skate them like that. So I feel like uh, next time we come to Ghana, I think uh, these dudes are going to be street skating a lot more and realizing that there's a lot more out there than just their, their locals. No, I, I mean, I'm sure, you know, if we have a skate park here, it's going to be like crazy. So that's why, yeah, I mean, but day at a time. I like the process too, you see. It's like people, sometimes they come and say, yeah, let's build a skate park or half pipe. I'm like, uh, I mean, the level is not here. Like, <laughs> you know, let, let's do, you know, day at a time the project. And I, and I like, and I like the way we grow, you know, it's, it's really, I don't know, we say LC, I don't know. It's just, we take our time to do everything and it's our best way to test and learn, you know, what is good for us. It's amazing because within those few days of skating with them, they're already trying the stuff they've seen the other guys do and they're progressing because of just 
having the exposure, um, everything they do is done by themselves, which is amazing. They do whatever it takes to, to skate, no matter what, and they're doing it together. And I find that inspiring, and I think a lot of people should take on the same mentality and not wait around for something to happen. I feel it's really necessary to document uh, Ghana in general and the skateboarding scene. Nobody do that. I mean, even for history, you see, like it's just cool to, to document the skate scene here. 